Hello, I'm Dr. Bill McIver. I'm the director of the Wiser MOCA simulation course. Thank you for choosing Wiser for this course. The goal of this presentation is to introduce you to some of the simulators and the equipment that you will use during your MOCA course. Now, placing arterial lines, intravenous lines, and central venous lines in the mannequin. The right arm of the mannequin's got some pretty uh, robust looking veins, as you can see there. But starting an IV on them is not particularly easy. It tends to be easy to get into the vein. Here's the so-called intern's vein, the brachiocephalic vein. And, you know, that feels pretty realistic to me. And, and get a pop there. I don't know if you saw it even. But getting this thing to then thread into the vein is not particularly easy. So generally speaking, if, it, if you want to start another IV on the patient, if you get everything you need together, put a tourniquet on, clean the skin with alcohol, and come over here with your needle and get poised here and get to about right here, we'll probably say, well, you've got another IV in place. Or if, you, if our goal is to uh, force you to look other places for an IV or get more help or something like that, we'd say you were unsuccessful. The same thing is true of the arterial lines on the mannequin. It's impossible to stick his radial artery and place a, an arterial line in. Same thing for his femoral arteries. So we ask you to pantomime it, get the arm out, tape it down, pull out your uh, arterial kit, get ready to stick it in. And if it's part of the uh, plan for the simulation that you're able to place an arterial line in the radial artery very simply, then we would tell you, okay, your arterial line's in place now. If it's not, part of our plan, we might tell you that you're unsuccessful with that and maybe you need to call for help and ask somebody to place a femoral line for you or you do it yourself, whatever your best decision is during the simulation. With respect to central lines, the mannequins do not have, these mannequins don't have any central veins. So you can't stick their internal jugular vein, nor their uh, subclavian, nor their femoral veins. Weiser does have central venous cannulation courses where we have special uh, torsos to practice placing central lines in but these full patient simulators do not have that function. If you need to place a central line, then again, we'll ask you to pantomime that. So we've got kits and everything. We'll have you use your usual standard of care if it's downing and gloving, what have you, pulling out the central line kit, prepping the neck or the uh, subclavian area or the femoral area and poising the needle over that particular uh, vessel. And once you're about right there, then we'll either tell you if you were successful or not. Again, depending upon what the, uh, the plan for our plan for the simulation is. For this particular mannequin, there's a couple of things that he doesn't do. Uh, signs of, of normal signs of illness that we can't show you. For example, he's always this skin tone. He's always this skin color. The temperature of his skin doesn't change. This mannequin won't sweat. It won't cry, it won't tear, it won't bleed, it won't salivate. Um, except for uh, the lungs during ventilation, it doesn't move. So during ventilation, usually you can see the chest going up and down. Certainly with spontaneous ventilation, you can see the chest going up and down. You saw that I was able to make his neck move a little bit. But we don't try to make this mannequin move really during the simulations. And remember again that his lungs are very, very stiff. Uh, the eyes don't change with this mannequin. In fact, this one doesn't have a pupil in the left uh, eye, but the right pupil looks normal. If we wanted to put a blown pupil in here, we could switch out this cornea and put one in. And we might do that for some scenarios, but we can't change them acutely. So as you make things better, you can't go back and look with this mannequin at the eyes to see if uh, the pupils have returned to uh, a normal size. So this is a digital machine. If you want to adjust any of the flow rates of anything, you touch buttons and turn a dial, and that adjusts inside of it uh, microprocessors that change flow rates. So for example, all these colors of blue here relate to the gas setup. So this uh, takes care of the um, FiO2, the patient's breathing, the total flow rate of gases going through it, and the composition of the volatile agent that you might be giving to the patient. So you can see right now we're on eight liters per minute of nothing but oxygen, and there's 100% oxygen. If I wanted to cut down to 50% oxygen, push that button there and adjust the, this dial, turn it down to 50, I can either push this button or this button, and that will enter that. And now we'll have a 50% FiO2, which in this case corresponds to 5.1 liters per minute of air and 2.9 liters per minute of oxygen. If I want to turn down the whole fresh gas flow rate, spin that down like that to 2 liters per minute, and pop the button again, and there's a total of two liters per minute of 50% oxygen. 
to turn on the volatile agent, pop this button and turn the dial and you can give 2.4% desflurane. Now this is an actual anesthesia machine on loan to us designed for use with real patients and obviously there's no desflurane inside the vaporizer. So pretty soon this thing's going to squawk at us and tell us that there's no desflurane in the vaporizer and it will even shut off. And we don't really know how to work around this right now in simulation. So again, if you're ever curious, oh the desflurane's turned off, is that real? Say something out loud and somebody will come along and answer that question because everybody's going to need help with that. Um, here's the uh, workings for the ventilator and uh, a couple of other things over here. Um, the big take home message is that we'll let you work with this thing before we start the simulations so that you have at least a little bit of experience working the ventilator and if you're ever confused tell us what you want to do and a helpful simulation cohort will come along as an anesthesiology technician and either show you how to do it in the middle of the simulation or do it for you. This is SimMan's monitor and the default is to put the electrocardiogram up here in green. We always give you a lead two. We don't give you two leads of electrocardiogram, but just one. Then the pulse oximeter is above, below it, rather. And it's in yellow. Um, the arterial blood pressure is below that. Should you have an arterial line in the patient, that's in red. Here's a place for the PA catheter waveform if you had that in place. We could also put a central venous pe pressure waveform up here if that were appropriate for the scenario. Here's the end tidal CO2. We don't use a real capnogram with the mannequins. Um, here's a respiratory rate over here. He's breathing spontaneously at a rate of 12 right now. And in the bottom left-hand corner is the, uh, the manual blood pressure, uh, the blood pressure cuff pressure. If you want to start another pressure, push the start stop button and that will trigger us to go ahead and fire the blood pressure cuff for you one more time. So this is the uh, bluebell cart that we use for our simulations. Um, on top here we have our simulated medicines. These are obviously all tap water. Um, note that we don't do anything to really try to make propofol look particularly milky. Um, we do have a propofol label on here and that would obviously indicate that that was the simulated drug we're, that's inside this syringe. We have automidate and uh, here's a succinylcholine, fentanyl, uh, and some of the various other um, uh, hemodynamic agents. Before you start your simulations you'll have an opportunity to come in here and look for medicines um, and go through this cart and find out where we've got medicines. Again anytime you want to give something that you don't see immediately go ahead and say out loud I'd like to start some sodium nitroprusside and a helpful uh, simulation cohort who's playing the role of an anesthesia technician will come in and, and help you either find the drug, mix it up for you, whatever it might be uh, needed for that particular scenario. In closing, again, I want to thank you for choosing Wiser for your simulation course needs. Simulation has reached a, a level of sophistication now, obviously much different than it was 20 years ago, but nowhere near what it will be 20 years from now. So in order to have a successful simulation course, the instructors, the participants, and all the technicians need to work together. Sometimes the mannequins stop for whatever reason. The uh, software fails us right in the middle of a simulation what have you. So we all need to keep a sense of good humor. We need to do the best we can with this and remember that this is a learning experience. We're not here to evaluate you. We're here to work together to try to make anesthesiology safer. Thank you. I look forward to working with you at Wiser.